Amen. Well, welcome this evening. Thank you for joining us for part two of Treasured Possessions. Uh, yesterday, we spoke about part one, uh, how belong and esteem, how we are have this sense of belonging and a sense of value that comes with being God's special possession or God's treasured possession. These are, uh, it's a beautiful concept for us to, to think about, to consider, and to really sink into our hearts and our souls. And tonight, we're just going to quickly look at part two, which is God's pride and joy, right? There's an expression we use in English, our pride and joy. It's something that is just, that brings us such pride and such joy, something we have, whether it's an item or a person or, or whatever it might be. It's something we're very, we put all of our heart and soul into it. And uh, so that's what, that's kind of the topic that we're talking about tonight as God's treasured possessions. Now, out of all the things that you own, uh, is there a favorite that you have? Let's say if you own, uh, you know, out of all your shirts, is there a favorite shirt? Or out of all your shoes, is there a favorite shoe, pair of shoes that you love? Right? Uh, when you were a child, if you, you know, out of all any toys you had, what was your favorite? If you're a parent, do you have a favorite child? No, you can't say that really. <laughs> right? I sent my mother flowers on Mother's Day and I said a note from your favorite child. And then she thanked my sister. I was like, what, what's that all about? What's that all about? Right? Well, consider Abraham. Abraham, uh, his pride and joy or his favorite thing, his prized possession was his son. Isaac, out of all the things, and he was a wealthy man, out of all the things he had, Isaac was his most treasured. Out of all the things that God has created, and we have been learning that God owns everything, and he's created it, everything he owns, everything that exists, he, his love for his children is the most. He that we are his treasured possessions. Out of everything else, we are treasured possessions. We're looking that, at that in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7, where God says you are his treasured possession. Right In verse 8, he says, not because you're not treasured because you're so great and mighty and handsome and strong. He said, you are his treasured possession because he loves you. Not because anything great that we are, but because he loves you. And then Peter reiterates this for us, the church, his children, his begotten, the ones who are saved. In 1 Peter 2, 9, he says, you are God's special possession. Right? So these are our, our topics that we're dealing with. And do you have any treasured possessions out of all the things you have? Do you have a treasured possession? Something that's like... You know, whether it's of great monetary value, right? Maybe it's a piece of jewelry that you have. And, you know, when you have that piece of jewelry, you, you, you know, you treat it very carefully. You wrap it in cloth. You stick it in the safe, right? And you only wear it at certain times and certain occasions. Maybe it's something of sentimental value. Maybe it's something that uh, uh, you have that your child made for you. Or something that uh, uh, maybe someone passed away and you have an item that is of sentimental value that reminds you of them. Or maybe it's something of rarity. It has, it's so rare, it has extreme value. It's a one of a kind. It's one in the world, right? When you're, uh, you know, in America, you have maybe coins or stamps or even baseball cards of players. Something could be so rare, only one of a kind. And these things have value to us, right? But we, we have uh, our God's treasured possessions. So we're going to look at two points today, being a pride and joy, in Ephesians chapter 2. So if you have your Bible, open with me in Ephesians chapter 2. And we're looking at verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. And so read along with me in your Bible, starting in verse 4. It says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. 
And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the ages to come, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, in these several verses, we've got two main things here that we've been looking at about treasured possessions. What's the first thing you do with a treasured possession? How do you treat it, right? You treat it with care. You keep it safe. You keep it clean. You keep it neat. You, you, have, you, you treat it specially above everything else you have. You're delicate with it. You, you pay close attention to it. You're making sure that it's, it's, it keeps its value, right? So it has to be clean and kept, kept well. Um, looking in this verse... This is how God looks at us. It says, by grace you are saved. Saved. We, are, we, are, we were lost and away from him, and now we're saved. We are his possession, right? And then we are seated with him. He, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He takes us who are, who are mortal, enemies, lost in sin, and now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now he gave us prominence. So we're his possession and he gave us prominence. And then he says we are in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ. So we are placed in position. So all of these things, he has what is now, what is his, his possession, he has given prominence and he's given position. And so for you and I to come out of sin, to come out of darkness, to come out of our lostness, to come out of our, you know, this, this, this darkness, you know, everything against God, to now be brought into his family, his possession, and given prominence and position. We are taken care of. We are protected. We are cared for by him. Right? So something that is treasured is kept safe. And what, what, you know, how, what does it mean that we're kept safe? Look at John chapter 10, verse 27 through 31. It says this, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. Right? He keeps us safe. He gives us eternal life. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus says, I give you life, you will never perish, and no one's going to snatch you out. And then he says, my father who gave them to me, he's greater than all. And if you don't believe me, then believe the father. No one can snatch us out of his hand as well. And Jesus said, I and my father are one. He says, man, you've got double security. I, you're in my hand, and then you're in the father's hand. We are kept safe. God keeps his possession safe. And in 1 John 5, 18, in the Message Bible, uh, the Message Version, it, it puts it this way. It says, the God begotten, or the ones who belong to God, are also the God protected. The evil one can't lay a hand on them. We know that we are held firm by God. I love, you know, in, in the King James, it says, the evil one touches us not, right? It, it, he, he, it says this word touch, it, it means he can't cling on to us, right? He can't attach himself to us, right? We are God's possession and the evil one can no longer cling to us. We are free from that. We belong to God. We are seated in heavenly places, not a place where the evil one can go and be in a, and attach himself to us. Right, so the first thing what we do with a treasured possession is we care for it meticulously. We, we take extra care of it. We protect it. We don't let anything happen to it because it's of such value. The second thing we do with something that's of rare possession or of treasured possession is we put it on display, don't we? Right, we want to show it off. We want to, hey, Take it out, show it to our friends, show it to our neighbors. When they, when they come to the house, we say, look at this. Yeah, this is special. This is, oh, you've got one of those, right? When you go to a museum or you go to the Smithsonian or you go to someplace, you see these things of great value put on display, 
right? Whether it's the, the Hope Diamond or uh, the Crown Jewels of England, right? We go, and wow, that's just that's so amazing. And we can put them on display. And you know, God does the same with his treasures, is he puts them, us, on display so that, so that the angels can see the marvelous grace of God in us, so that the devil and, and all the enemies can see what God has done with us, and so that others can see what God has done. And we are God's trophies. We are his trophies of grace that he puts on display. Now, some of us feel maybe at times like, well, there are, you know, I'm just a little trophy maybe, you know, or, or, you know, God would put his big trophies out there like Billy Graham or David Livingstone or Lelia Lewis. These are the big trophies, right? These are the ones that are, uh, that we look up to and we go, wow, their faith, their strength, their, their, their perseverance. But he puts all of us, we're all the same to him. He puts all of us, we are all sinners that have received his grace, each one of us. Because sometimes I feel like I'm not even a trophy, trophy. I'm just a, maybe a, a, a certificate, right? You know, in today's day and age, you get a, a participation certificate. I'm just a Christian. I didn't do anything, but I just, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I get a sympathy award. Yeah, give it, give it to Wade, right? <laughs> just, give him, just give him something, right? Maybe I'm just the, I'm not a player, I'm just the water boy, Right? And I'll just give the players a cup. Right? But even a cup of cold water given in Jesus' name. God displays us to the world, to his angels, to the, to the unseen world, to the seen world, because we are his trophies of grace. We were lost and we are saved. We were in darkness, now we're in light. We were enemies and now we're family. So in verse 7 of Ephesians 2 that we read, it says this, continues. It says, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So God shows us. This word is to put on display, to exhibit, right? To prove of his grace. So we are put on display, and he says, and we will now and in the future, you know, he's talking to the Ephesians. The Ephesians were no, notorious sinners, and now they're saved. They are proof of God's grace and mercy. They are an encouragement to others that say, wow, that look at them and say, wow, I know what their life used to be. Now look at them. Oh, I knew what, you know, the life they used to live. Now look at what God has done in their life. They were a mess. God turned them around. We're on display of God's grace. Heaven will be filled with trophies of grace. We'll be looking around and go, what, you're here? <laughs> I'm here? Oh my gosh, right? It's unbelievable. So as God's treasured possessions, you and I are kept safe. We're valued, we're kept safe. We're kept meticulously clean, right? And number two, we're put on display. We are put on display as God's marvelous grace, evidence of his grace in love. So in closing, here's his closing thought. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 44 through 46, he gave these two quick examples. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and he went back, he sold all he had and he bought that field. He was so excited he found this treasure. He sold everything to buy that field, to have that treasure. And then he says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, a dealer. And he's looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of such great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and then came back to buy it. He found something treasured. He found something of such value, such Oh, and the Bible says he went away with joy to, to go buy it, right? So now that we understand that you and I are his treasures, and that we are his and he is ours, is he our most treasured possession? Think about this. Do we keep and guard God in our life as our most treasured possession? Do we guard God in our life? Do we not allow 
uh, 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 anything to harm our relationship with God? Do we not allow anything to come in and distract us from our relationship with God? Do we not allow sin to, to enter into our life to get us to question God, to move away from God? Do we keep a guard of that most precious possession in our heart, our Savior, our salvation? Or are we letting other things come in and try to destroy it, steal it? Number two, do we put God on display in our life? He puts, he puts us on display. He's not ashamed to call us his children. He's not ashamed to call us, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to show us off as trophies of his grace. Do we, are we ashamed to put God on display in our life? Do we show off, do we show God off to whoever we meet? Do we show God off in our circumstances, in our trials, to our family and friends? Or do we show our selfishness off or, or, or our, our, our anger or our old life? These are thought questions for us to go forward. If, God, if we are his treasured possession, do, do we honor him as our treasured possession? Do we guard him? Do we guard that life we have with God? And do we put God on display? so that all can see. Do we let our light shine in gratitude and thankfulness and humility? God, thank you for your grace. Anyway, these are great thoughts for us to think about as we close part two of Treasured Possession. So join us for part three tomorrow and uh, have a great evening. God bless you.